In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can convert your clothing into 3D prototypes just like this. Hey, I'm James from Studio on 8. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you've already purchased this product, this is gonna really help you to work through it. And if you're just looking at it to scope it out, hopefully this gives you a really good overview of what's possible. So this mock-up is brought to you in collaboration with Future Deconstruction. If you haven't seen his work yet, then you really need to check it out. He's a brilliant 3D artist. What you can expect is to get the same results that he's outputting for some of the biggest clients out there. So in this video, what I'd like to do is start from the basics. There are a few videos that we've already done, but what I wanna do is give you a really good run through of exactly what to expect. And even if you're using 3D for the first time, I know that's quite a daunting landscape and software package to learn, but this completely leapfrogs that whole process. So you don't need to do that. You don't need to be a 3D artist to be able to use these. You just need to be able to drag and drop your artwork, just like you would on a Photoshop mockup. So if you haven't already downloaded the products, you can head over to shop.studioinate.com and download them. So once you've downloaded the file, you're gonna get it in a zip format. In this example, I'm gonna show you two files. I'm gonna show you the t-shirt one and I'm gonna show you the hoodie one. So you just wanna double click these zip files to open them up. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the t-shirt one first. So in this folder, you'll see you've got your design template. This is the file that you're gonna be working within. So the only files you need is place your design here and the t-shirt on a hanger because the other files just make the mock-up work. So it's gonna open up in Blender. So if you haven't downloaded Blender yet, that's free software to use. You don't need to pay for that. And what I really wanna stress is that you always wanna make sure you're using the latest version. So every time you wanna use it, maybe just check you're using the most up-to-date version because we're always creating these mockups and we're always updating them as well. So if there have ever been any updates done, they will be in the latest software and you don't wanna be using old software because it's gonna overwrite some of the new features that we've put in and you don't wanna miss out on them. So at the moment I'm using 4.2.0. So you'll see here that we've got the model here and we've got our different viewports at the top. So we've got this wireframe one. You don't really need to worry about using that. That's just a really quick way to render. We've then got the model version. So that's a good way just to kind of get an idea of what's going on and scope around. Then we've got the shading render mode, and that's a really good way to see how things are gonna look with a quick render view. And then we've got the full render mode as well, and that's gonna absolutely rinse your machine. If you've got a good machine, like you're a gamer or something like that, your machine will probably be able to do a lot of this heavy lifting, it'll be fine. But if you're just working on something like a laptop, you might not want to work on that mode because it's going to strain it. But it's a really good viewport just to check everything is looking exactly how you want before you render it. Over here on the right hand side, this is where all the magic happens. So I'm going to switch back to that shading mode just so we've got a bit more of an idea of what's going on. So at the top, the first one we've got in the clothes folder is the t-shirt rotation. And what that is, is that's the entire model. So if we click on that drop down, you can see we've got all these elements that we can use. We can also switch them all off. I'll show you that in a second. We've got camera modes as well. So we've got this one. If we click on that little icon, and then if we click on the camera icon itself here, it's gonna give you a viewport of what that camera is looking like. So we've got the moving camera that just eases in and out in a really nice way while the garment rotates. And then we've got this ultra close view, We've got this bottom angle, which is quite a nice one. Then we've got the top angle. I really like this one in particular. And then we've got the bottom one as well. So it gives that nice low angle. So let's say we're going to go for this one here, this top angle. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch the hanger off because we don't want that in our render. You can quite easily just do that by clicking on these icons. This one on the right here, that's for your render. So if you want to disable it from being rendered, make sure you switch that off as well. The eye is your preview. So for example, if you had the eye on on the render off, then it's not gonna render um, and vice versa as well. So if you've only got the eyeball switched off, but the camera's on, then it's still gonna render. I wanna keep that on. So now you're probably wondering how you can place your artwork on this garment. So what we need to do is we need to click on T-shirt. So that's now in the editing mode for here. I'm gonna give ourselves a little bit more space here. So I'm gonna lift these elements up. Feel free to move them around, whatever you wanna do. And then this quite clearly labeled is where you put your design. And then what you'll need to do is double click this and then click new image. And then you've got an option here where this has now been converted into a folder. I'm gonna go over to that folder again and then I'm gonna go to place your design here. So with the transparent background showing now, that's how you wanna save your file. You don't wanna save it with this background guide on, that's just a guide. What we wanna do is we can switch that on for now, just um, while we're working with it. 
but we've got options here to have the stone wash effect. You can switch that on or off. Um, we've got the artwork here and then we've got an embroidery area here. So if you wanted to add some embroidery, all you need to do is drop that down and then double click this. And then you'll see here, these are the only elements that we've chosen to have an embroidery effect. So I'm going to switch that guide off again. I'm going to save that down. I don't really need to save it actually because I'm not doing any updates, but there are embroidery elements to this. What you'll see here is we've got the embroidery effects already, already positioned in here. And then all we would need to do is accompany that with the screen print effects as well. So to give you an idea of what we're going to work with, I'm going to put a design on this. So I'm going to switch everything off because I'm not going to use the embroidery on this one. And I'm also not going to use the stone wash effect. I'm just going to keep it nice and clean. I'm going to go with a white garment. So I'm going to get this artwork from one of our previous drops. And then we're going to go and paste our artwork in. I can use, you can use pixels, shape layer, or whatever it is you want to work with. You could put it in as a smart object or just drag and drop a PNG, whatever it is that you're using. But make sure it's transparent. That's the main thing. So we're going to go and drop that in. I'm going to resize it briefly and then I'm going to turn this guide to white just so it looks a bit more like what I'm expecting. So in terms of positioning this, I'm going to have it slightly, I want it oversized. So I want a nice big back print, but I don't want it too crazy. It's because it's going to go right into these seams and we don't want that. You kind of have to gauge it. And once you get used to using these, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and you start to figure out how things are going to sit, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we're going to go ahead now and get the front of this design as well. So I'm going to go and get that and then paste that in. And the reason it's upside down is just because of the way that I set the screen up when I was printing this project. So I just had to flip the screen in order to get that to work. That's looking good now. I'm happy with that positioning. And then if I wanted to do stuff like put some put a print on the collar, I could do that. Sleeves, same thing. I'm going to check this is all good and then I'm going to save this down. And what the most important thing is to remember is when you are saving this down is do not change the size because it's going to mess around with things. And also at the moment it's set to JPEG. We don't want that. We want a PNG because we want to retain that transparent background. So we're going to put it on PNG. We're going to make sure that it's exactly the same size, which is 6,400 pixels. And then we're going to export that and we can save that down to something like our desktop, for example. And then I'm just going to rename it just in case we get any file conflicts. So I'm just going to put place your design here one. Now we're going to go back over to Blender. And this folder is now visible, if you remember, because I clicked image, new image. And then the folder is now available. So if I'm going to go to my desktop, you're going to see that we've got place your design here. So I'm going to click on that and then add that to the file. So what we need to do now is change the color of the garment because we can't see it. So we're going to go to white. And then you'll see here that we've got these effects coming in from the placeholder design. And the reason that's there is because that's a puff print effect that we've got in there. And there's a video up here that goes into a lot more detail on how you can add the puff print effect. So if that's something you want to use, then great. And it also works really well with the embroidery as well. It gives that lift. But in this example, we're not going to use that. So what we want to do is make sure that this is not connected. So this normal map here, that's where you would add that effect. So all we need to do to disconnect that is just pull this away and that's gone. You'll notice that we've got a black color. We want to change that by going through the different slots. So at the moment we're in slot one, that's the main garment print. So we want to go to slot two and then this one is for the inside material. So we're going to change that to white. We're going to go to slot two color material here. And we're going to change this one to white as well. So what you notice now is that the collar is gray and we don't want that. The reason why that's gray is because it's picking up on the vintage wash that was left on with the previous template as a placeholder. So in order to remove that, we want to go and update our artwork onto that too, because we don't have the vintage wash on that. So if we go back to our desktop, place your design here. It's now perfectly white. So we're going to zoom out and then we can have a little preview of how that's looking by dragging this slider across. So we've got our back print on the back there, looking perfect, really like that. And that is essentially everything that you need to do. All you need to do then is click render and you might want to choose a different camera view now. So let's go with something on the back. So I want to show the back and so say let's rotate this around. 
to there. Maybe it's slightly more angle. That's good. And if I just wanted to render an image of this, I'm going to go render. I'm going to render and then render image. And then that will come through and put together our first render. And the one thing with 3D, you just need to be a little bit patient when it comes to making renders. It takes its time. It's just the way that 3D is. So this is the time that you might want to go and grab yourself a coffee and um, have a little bit of a break, take your lunch break or something and let it render in the background. But if you're in a rush, for example, there are some little tricks that you could do to speed up the whole process. And I'll go over that shortly. That is our first static render done. So now let's crack on and do a video. And instead of using the t-shirt, we're going to use the hoodie for this one. So we're going to go into here, exactly the same process. So we're going to open up that hoodie file. Once that's opened as well, again, just make sure you're using the latest version of Blender. And then we're gonna switch over to the shading mode so we can see what's going on. So with this design, I'm not gonna have any puff print or embroidery going on, so I'm gonna disconnect all of those features. So we're gonna go through and do that for each one because each of these slots has got various elements to it. So for example, we've got the hood, we've got the pocket, and you can update your artwork to each of these. So I'm going to go and get my artwork. I'm going to keep the placeholder black because we're going to work with a black garment this time. And you're going to go and select the artwork. Okay, I'm happy with that. So all I need to do is switch the guide off. Then I'm going to go and export that as a PNG. And because I deactivated the stone wash effect, I'm going to need to go and do that for each of these as well. With the garment color, let's put this into the middle so we don't have any color tones going on. And then let's bring this slider down to around 90%. I'd say about there is good. What I'm going to do now actually as well is I'm going to get that hex code. I'm going to copy this and I'll paste this into each slot. So it's exactly the same color. So I'm going to go and paste that in that one. This one. Same to the pocket. So you can see the garment transforming in front of me, all these little elements that we're going through and changing. So if you wanted to have all these various colors, obviously you can do that. Um, it's totally, totally up to you. So let's go back to the main one now, and this is where we're going to add our artwork. So click on that little icon, click new image, and then click on the folder that comes up. We're going to go to the desktop where our file was saved, and then we're going to go to Eddie PNG. So you'll see now we've got our artwork positioned on there. You'll see that we've got the artwork from the template file as well. It's still on the hood and it's lighter as well. Again, same as the t-shirt, that's just because the stone wash effect is on. So if we go to the hood material and then we go and update the artwork on that, you'll see that that's now the right color. Same for the inside of the hood as well. So I'll show you a different angle for that. You see the inside of the hood as well, same scenario. Click on new image. desktop, hoodie. So you get the idea. So it might seem a bit annoying that you have to do that, but this is just the case because initially it had the stone wash effect on. And if you don't want that on, then this is the way that you'd have to go about removing it. Um, and um, once this is done, essentially it's done. If you haven't got anything printed on the cuffs or anything like that, then you won't have to keep doing this process. You could just have an empty PNG on here if you didn't want anything on those bits. The next thing we want to do is make a render. So I'm going to go for this close view. So let's go for that. So what I'm going to do to speed up this process is instead of rendering every single frame with this background in, I'm going to deactivate the background by going over here and clicking this tick. And now it's just going to render the garment. And then what we could do instead is put in any other background that we like, or we could render the background on its own by switching the hoodie off. So we can go up to this main section here and switch the clothes off and we could render that, just that backdrop on its own as one image and then put the transparent background version over the top of that. So we just want to check the size of everything as well. At the moment we've got it set to 1200. It's a good size, but we could bring that down if we wanted to. And when times against you, everything helps. So you could bring that down to 900, for example. And then over here, we could put denoise on for the render. And then we could change that, the max samples, we could bring that down to 200. And it's just little things like that that will just help to speed the whole process up. So all we're going to do is click render, click render animation. And then we just got to sit back, 
let this do its thing. So go and grab a coffee, go and have some lunch, dinner, whatever, and um, come back in about an hour or two and this will be fully rendered. Okay, so now we've got that rendering as an animation, what we want to do is go and inspect what we've got going on. So if we go into our folder now, you'll see that in here, we've got all of these separate PNGs that are being created. And what we need to do is stitch them together. So we're going to go over and open up Premiere Pro. So that's what I'm using because I've got the Adobe suite, whereas you may not have that. So if that is the case, you can follow some of the links down in the description. And those are different platforms on the internet that you can use to stitch a PNG sequence together. So we're going to go ahead and create a new project. So we can just call this whatever. I'm going to save it onto my desktop. And then the sequence name, that could just be called hood. I'm going to go and click create. So what we've got here is just a blank canvas. So what we want to do is where it says add your media here, this might be a different configuration for you. Um, if it is, you just want to go to workspaces and then just click on something like all panels, for example. So I'm going to go right click and then I'm going to go to import. And then I'm going to go to the desktop and then in here, this is where the folder is containing all of the PNGs within that sequence. So I'm going to arrange these in order. So we've got zero, zero, zero as the start, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Click on that first one, click on show options, and then make sure that image sequence is checked and then click import. Then I just want to go and drag that onto this media area. And then we've got our render. Perfect. So. I could then add a background to that. So I could do that in a variety of ways. So the first way that I could do that is by having the layer above. And then in this layer, I could go ahead and draw a square. So I could make that, I could make that square. I'm just going to draw a square and I drag that underneath. And then I could change that to any color. So I could go and choose white, for example. And then that would all look really nice. So I just need to make sure that that's the same length as the animation itself. Or what I could do is I could drag that up one more time and then I could go and put some branded elements underneath it as well. So for example, I could go and get a logo and then I could stick that underneath. This logo file is enormous. So I'm gonna click right click and then I'm gonna to go to scale to frame size and then I could just reduce that a bit more as well. And then we've got, we've got the logo behind. So you could do something like that. You could have like coming soon or whatever, or you could have loads of little animated graphics. You could do anything you like behind this. Um, and that's just a really quick way of rendering this down. So you don't have to do the background each time because if, for example, if I wanted to stick one render of the background behind that, it would save me having to render that background over and over and over again. So once that's done, all we need to do now is click export. We can save this down as hood. For example, we've got an MP4 now. So this is now the video format that we wanted. And then we can go and choose our location. So desktop is fine for me. So then we want to click export and then we're good to go. And that is literally all there is to it for you to get 3D renders of your clothing just like that. So if you like this video or if it's been really helpful for you, feel free to click like, we really appreciate that. And also if you want to subscribe, feel free to do that too. Really appreciate that. And if you need our help for anything, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram. It's the best place to get us on there where we're most active. And in the meantime, we're really excited to see what you guys make using this mock-up. Enjoy.